Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Intel Extreme Masters San Jose. I am Maddles and we're going into the Group B Decider game. And for those of you wondering, how is it all looking in the groups at the moment? Well, we just got out of Huck versus Snoop, which was the Decider game. And Huck was able, oh sorry, Huck was eliminated 0-2. Uh, overall in his group, Snoop just able to beat him 2-1 in that final stage. We're now going in to Jadong versus First, however, and this is going to be a very, very awesome game. It has started, so let's jump straight on into this. And well, spawning up to the top left-hand position, we have got the Red Zerg player representing Evil Geniuses, none other than Jadong. And his opponent down to the bottom right, the blue Protoss playing for TCM. It is first. So, first and Jadong, how did they end up here? Well, they were in a group with Revival and Polt. First, unfortunately, was defeated 2 1 versus Revival in a PVZ, and Jadong lost 2 0 to Polt in a TVZ. And that's how we've ended up here with another PVZ, starting on King Sejong Station. And it's going to be a good one. And just as we saw with Huck versus Snoop, this is the elimination game of Group B. Whoever loses this series ends their run in Intel Extreme Masters San Jose here. And it is that simple. The winner, they don't automatically get through. They have to go on and face off against the winner of Revival and Polt. And that decide a game. So it would be very, very tough still. It's going to be interesting to see. And of course, that stage three, it is the quarterfinal stage. Best of fives for the quarterfinals and semifinals. And a best of seven for the finals live from the stadium. It is going to be ridiculously intense. First at the moment, just coming on through. Note that he does have a forge, so cannons are a possibility. Jadong, does he see it? Not yet, but he sees a probe dancing back and forward. He knows. But unfortunately, second pylon comes down. This is where it starts getting pretty tough to defend this. And it is going to be undefendable at this stage. You can't really stop this cannon rush uh, if the pro puts one down because there's two pylons blocking the way. Now the pylon gets through. The probe is able to escape on out. This is so, so tough to do. All of the drones being pulled. But it just takes so, so long. This is incredibly frustrating for Jadong. He opened with the hatchery first as well, which is why this is becoming so problematic. The cancel, or well, the second cannon, was cancelled. The first one is not quite finished up, and a couple of drones are able to get surface area on there. Just trying to get three on, but can't do it. Has to cancel that natural base, and this cannon rush was therefore successful. First, able to deal significant amounts of damage to Jadong early stages of this game. He should be starting up his nexus behind this. He's just about to hit enough minerals in order to do so. Allowing the second cannon to finish just to buy himself even more time. Making a defensive cannon too before that nexus. And all in all, just wants to make sure that he's completely safe before going for his expansion. Because if he is safe, if there's no counterattack coming through from Jadong, well, he's got himself into a very good position in game number one here. Still waiting to see if any more damage can be figured on out. Pylon block is coming down on what could have been a potential third base. Uh, the one up to the north isn't even being attempted yet. So this is just further delaying an expansion coming down from the Evil Genius Zerg. We should see a pylon block come down here as well if possible. Uh, oh, the drone getting just shied away for the moment. First, does he see the second drone? He does. Putting the probe. Is he going to go for the block? There we have it. Has actually cancelled the pylon up here. So it will allow Jadong to take finally an expansion. But it's in a fourth base location. Actually, arguably the fifth base location. Very, very rough position. First now, sitting here with his natural base coming on through, his gateway coming on through. And while Jadong has able to take his third base as well, this is already at like the 5 minute 44 mark. He's been on one base up until this point, had to start mining some gas. It is just so, so frustrating to be playing up against that cannon rush style with, of course, this nice block position and that cannon, which you pretty much can't stop unless you prevent those two pylons getting placed. So checking around now, first is just happy and chilling here, to be honest. He's going to be chrono boosting our probes, teching up, without really any concerns in the world, because he knows that his opponent has had to take two rather exposed bases, and therefore he can just wait it on out. 
Running down a pylon around the back here, this could be an indicator of some aggression coming later. Remember, of course, you do have this debris at the back of the natural base uh, that first may decide to use, although trying to come through this way seems like a bit of a, an awkward way since you've got two pylons here ready and waiting for a very safe warp in thanks to the two cannons if you did want to get aggressive up into the main base um but no it's actually gonna be for a proxy stargate okay this is this is gonna hurt and the reason a proxy stargate is gonna be so painful is because there's no creep spread between the main natural and third or the first second and third hatch the natural hasn't even been taken then as a result there's no ways to get the queens through quickly. There are additional queens coming, but their positioning could be key in deflecting any pressure here. The Stargate about two-thirds done. Meanwhile, uh, behind this first is just still happily probing on up, getting a good economy going, sitting on those two gases. And Jadong is just scrambling to try and get a decent, um, a decent amount of drone production coming on through. So I'm still checking here. You got the Oracle now on its way, as well as three additional gates. First is not messing about. First is just like, I'm going to win this game. I've cannon rushed you. I delayed your natural. I massively delayed you taking a second and third hatch at awkward locations. And now I'm going to Oracle you and just melt all of your probe line and see how you like it. Five more additional gates coming through. Well, actually five additional gates in total. Going up to six gate. Warp gate tech being chrono boosted out. And now the Oracle is finished a second one is queued up as well what is there to defend this one queen one queen does not stop an oracle on its own if it's a head up five it doesn't deal enough damage to stop a vast majority of drones getting picked off and when we factor in how delayed those additional hatches were this is even more painful for jadong losing these workers he just doesn't have the drone count as it is let alone losing them the second oracle is now out going to be looking to try and get even more pressure done no spore crawlers being made instead just getting those drones and trying to replace them. But with the second Oracle now coming on through, even more workers getting picked off. Now a spore finally being constructed for Jadong. But the damage is already being achieved. 12, 13, 14, 15 worker kills. Going for broke. Gets 16 before the Oracle picked on off. A lot of Zealots also trying to apply pressure here. The Zerglings are being produced trying to stop this they should be able to prevent this first wave but additional warp are going to be coming on through of course there's five gateways sorry six gateways here already off these two bases the plus one melee attack coming on three as well jadong is fighting such an uphill battle at the moment he's taken significant losses 16 workers have been killed first is still up in the work account at the moment and still heavily warping in more units that as a result means that jadong has to make an incredibly tough decision does he drone more to try and get his work account back up to where he'd want it to be normally at like the 10 minute mark in this game or does he try and play it safe and get a couple more units out he's got to play it perfectly if he wants a chance in this game he cannot leave too few drones because if he stops the push and can't carry on after he'll get overpowered but he can't leave too few units because otherwise these zealots are just going to do too much work the cannon actually helping out significantly here quite a few of the zealots have been taken down but Jadong, regardless, is still losing more resources than his opponent, having to fend off these two oracles now, picking off even more workers, and both of the oracles able to sneak away. Just one of them able to sneak away. That, that other one parked a bit too close to the queens, and not really where you want to be. So, still looking for more options, still looking for a way to deal with this. The trouble is, Jadong needs to try and clear out this infestation of Protoss. At his natural base. Moving in now with those five queens and with the speedlings. The cannon's dealing quite a lot of work here. The transfuse are looking good though from the Zerg player. Able to keep those queens alive. Gets one of the cannons down. Should be able to take down the rest of these units adequately now. And is now focusing down that cannon quickly. The transfuses really were in a great position. Able to keep those queens alive. Minimize the damage that Jadong was going to take from it. But still, a Voidway has been having a bit of a nice time up in the main base. And while these speedlings have been able to deal with the pressure, look at the worker count. 47 to 43. More workers getting picked off by this Oracle with 17 kills on it. This is just such a nice spot for this Oracle. And just the Oracles in general. Workers killed 34 this game by first. And that's not even accounting for the delay in production and the delay in income by cannon rushing this natural base successfully caused. Third base now coming through from first and he is gonna be able to to deal a little bit of damage he is just trying to pick apart but to be honest Jadong he doesn't have enough lings to be able to prevent this third base from being taken and with blink and plus two both firmly on their way out here now it's an upgrade lead coming through for first 
It's a worker lead coming through for first, and he's still got this Oracle out looking for the opportunity to harass further. Is he going to come out or is he just going to go for it? He's going to try and get away and does manage to get away just escaping. Racking up four more worker kills and that has got to be one of the most successful oracles I have seen in a pro game of StarCraft 2 in a long, long time. 22 worker kills. Crazy. That Voidway still overlord hunting, trying to find any uh, that may be about on the map. Has got three so far, been relatively successful. Actually, no, he hasn't. He's got no... He hasn't got a single or overlord yet. Bad, bad Voidway. Should have been doing more than that. But yep, yeah, checking around. God. Little move up now, just a small group of units. And it may only be a small group, but Jadong doesn't really have too much else here. A couple of force fields going to segment off a few of these queens. Allow the rest, the other two, to get picked apart at. Good force fields preventing a lot of these Zerglings from being able to close up the distance into these sentries. Of course, the spine corner trying to get some more damage. A couple of Mutalists are now on the field, and these could actually be a bit of a problem to first. He's only got a handful of sentries. Going to just recall it out. Get, obviously, that Phoenix production going with the two Stargates back at home. And, well, with all of that, it's done a bit. Buying time here for Jadong. But the Blink Stalkers are working away nicely. They don't actually manage to get a single Mutalisk there. And that is very, very frustrating for first. He would have liked to have been able to do that. Checking around, of course, we do have the War Prism ready to go and do a little bit more harassment up on this left-hand side, trying to get damage down where possible. And Jadon, even though he does have a couple of Mutalisks, there's only 13, and he's having to use them to defend multiple bases. And with this War Prism harassment as well, it's going to be very difficult for him. The supplies are leveling out. The work accounts are leveling out. But my concern is there's just been too much of an advantage for first for too long for Jadon to battle it back. And first now loading up a couple of zealots on this left hand side in that war prism. Going to be trying to get a bit more drop play coming on through. Find a couple more avenues to attack. Still checking about, still looking at where else these two may be able to get a bit of damage done. The Mutalesks edging on forward. Meeting the Phoenix and that's not what they wanted to find here. One Mutalisk instantly gets taken down, although quite a few Zerglings able to sneak up into the main base. We'll need some Warpins to stop that. The Mutalisk's trying to escape away. There was a cannon in the main, but regardless, a few probes could end up getting picked apart. Up in the main, the Zerg, Zerg Zealots, though, dealing some good damage to the Zerg player. And well, that Spire is going to be the good target. These are plus two Zealots. They're going to be working away at it very nicely. They've got a good surface area on it regardless, and I think that Spire cannot be saved. And that is already a good pick off. The Mutalisks chasing down a lot of these Mutalisks. And with the Phoenix here as well, the Overlords, they're going to be easy pickings. Down here at the fourth base, lots of damage being done as well. And GG called first, takes game number one of this best of three. So it may have taken him a little bit longer than maybe he would have wanted. But with that cannon rush opening, he was in a very good spot. Quick break now while we set up map number two of this best of three here at Intel Extreme Masters San Jose. Stay tuned. We'll be back with game two of Jadong vs. First shortly.
Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Intel Extreme Masters San Jose. I am Maddles and we're going into map number two of this best of three. It is Group B elimination game and spawning to the top right of Nimbus. We have got the Blue Zerg, sorry the Blue Protoss playing for TCM. It is first. And his opponent down to the lower right, the Red Zerg player representing Team Evil Geniuses. It is Jadong. So, a bit of Jadong versus First. First is 1 0 up currently in this best of three. In game number one, it was 18 minutes, but it was looking so rough right from the get go for Jadong. First, he went for that cannon rush on King Zhejiang Station, did a huge amount of damage, prevented the natural, delayed the attempt at the second and third base for such a prolonged period of time. And then came in with this proxy Stargate and the Oracles. They did a hideous amount of damage. The Mutalisks did buy Jadong a bit more time. But the Phoenix were out in plenty in order to respond long term. And Jadong, he was battling uphill. A very, very big hill. And he just wasn't able to succumb to it. With a better start though, I think Jadong has still got good odds in this. And the reason being is because, well... Game number one, things went pretty awful for him in terms of the cannon rush. And he was able to cling on for 18 minutes. This game, well, Jadong, he's opening up hatch first yet again. He's going to go hatch, hatch, pool actually here, which is going to be good for him. Because first, he has gone for a gateway expand. So hatch, hatch, pool against that is going to work really well for him. He also took the third hatchery first. I spoke about this in Snoot versus Huck on this map where they played their first game. And one of the things about taking this hatchery initially is it allows you to get creep spread. And this is the base that's going to be harder to defend. Up in your main, you're not going to have too much trouble defending this natural base against anything other really than Stargate plays. So interesting to see Jadon going for that. Getting that creep spread down is going to put him in good stead to be able to fend that off. The other big thing that Jadon really needs to be keeping a, a good look for is any pylons that are coming down here, here, very common positions to get some pylons. Proxy Stargates are also a possibility if you did want to go from around this sort of vicinity. But to be honest, on this map, in these spawn positions, Stargate wouldn't be the best. If first was spawning down in the lower left, Stargate play can be very effective pushing into the natural base of Jadong. But yeah, here, not too much of a threat there other than any other map that it might be on. So we'll just wait and see. How first decided to play this, obviously he did have a lot of success with the Oracles in game number one. He may choose to go for that again, or he may very well just switch things off. So, um, we'll see if he does switch it up or whether he goes for something else. But for the moment, just getting a Zealot out, also going for the Stalker, and now taking his natural base a little bit later. Otherwise, Jadong, he's got three hatches, going very nicely. Uh, also, the spawning pool finished on up, so the Queen production is just underway get those injects going trying to get himself into a bit of a better spot there otherwise yeah this is all looking pretty safe and fine still trying to make sure nothing too crazy goes on a couple of additional gates actually getting thrown down and it is only the one gas so with this we may see a very zealot intensive play come on through with four gateways worth of pressure coming in there isn't a pylon out on the map yet where is the probe okay coming a long way out First knows where his opponent spawns, so this pylon is actually a heck of a long way back. That's a real long way away. Really long way away. Should be trying to place one a little bit closer as well, maybe up in this sort of vicinity. But Jadong doing a fine job of checking around every little avenue. Anywhere that there could be pylons coming down, or the common pylon positions. But isn't checking around to the side here. We'll see the Zealot and Stalker pushing on through. And does already have 10 Zerglings in production. He hasn't really seen anything more other than that gateway at the front, but... May still be wanting to just play things on the safe side. He hasn't got a gas count either, so can't guess too much there. But what he is able to see is the pylon. And that pylon is a giveaway that some kind of gateway pressure is coming on through now. It's probably going to be at least or four gates worth. So let's just get a spine and try and play things safely. Three queens already being pulled down to the front. The roach warrant coming on through as well. Otherwise, just a decent amount of warp is going to be coming on down. There's also the Stargate as well. That's what the pylon was for. So very aggressive play coming down here from first. Mothership got harassing a little bit. Trying to get any damage where possible. Was able to kill something. Probably a Zergling, I imagine. Yep, would have been a Zergling. Anything that's died so far. 
Still edging on in. Looking for a bit more damage. Spine crawler gonna start poking. Of course, with this many zealots, it's gonna be quite tough. And first, he's debating just charging up into the main base. He does have enough energy for a recall. But he doesn't want to leave his pylons exposed. That's the issue right now. Ten roaches are being produced, though. And this is gonna significantly help in deflecting this pressure. But note the oracle is also on its way through. That could be catching Jadong off guard because at the moment he doesn't have any spores. And here we have it. First just running straight on up here. He's going to see a lot of those roaches. Not going to be too happy. Jadong defending this off first. Pushing on forward. Trying to get as much done as possible. But those roaches are going to be terrifically effective up against the zealots. Lair coming on through. The oracle is now out on the field and making its way across. Um, actually, it's, not, it's waiting. A second oracle coming on through. So Jadong is going to be able to deflect this zealot pressure very nicely and there's not really too much that can be done about it the mothership core is going to just recall out now but all of those zealots taken down and minimal losses really taken by jadong there 23 zerglings two roaches were killed but that was pretty much it first though while he lost all those zealots it's the oracles coming up behind this that could be causing a problem there aren't any spore crawlers and jadong could very well be lulled into a full sense of security not expecting to see this come on down in come the two oracles now. There's not really much to defend this. These drones getting sniped down incredibly quickly. The roaches were looking to go and counterattack. They're coming on back. They're not going to be able to help too much here, though. Those oracles racking up a fair few kills between them. Ten in total. That's a good bit of damage. We'll now back away. Uh, only one of them taking a little bit of health damage, but that is pretty much it. Still, keeping a look at all of these lings and roaches. There's a good number of them, but they're unlikely to be able to get much success trying to push in here. Obviously, the debris still up, so only one force field needed to completely wall that down. And all the while, Oracles are still having an absolute field day here, going against any drones that they can find. Backing out now, only a little bit of shield damage done. Five more workers killed, taking the total of 15. And that isn't as bad as it was in game number one, to be fair, in terms of the damage done. But these Oracles are still alive. They are still going to be trying to poke and prod and deal a little bit more damage wherever possible. There are spores and queens down now at every base, but... Still, two oracles, they can dish out a substantial amount of fire and a substantial amount of harassment pretty damn quickly. Queen, of course, is also exposed. The oracles could just go for the queens. Two oracles easily beat a queen. So they may decide to focus those down in the future. But for now, just opting for the approach of staying alive as potential damage in the future. Solo or going in and just trying to go for broke it means that Jadon can then take a cross eye of his mind and sit there and go okay i'm not going to be getting harassed anymore at least by those oracles so i can be a bit more aggressive use my apm elsewhere other than making sure i'm nice and safe from oracle harassment third base now coming on through here for first so he's going to be expanding on out we do have a decent number of lings and roaches still about looking for anything they can being forced back by the mothership core at the moment still keeping a good look not too much else. Just the infestation bit now finishing up for Jadong, actually. He's going to be going for the pathogen glands. This is a lot of fun. A couple of force fields coming on through. These roaches are being forced a little bit back at the moment. But there's more coming in from this left-hand flank. This third base running into some problems. And first is significantly down in terms of the overall supply. The energy on these sentries, there is still enough for a couple more force fields. But to be honest, these roaches are just getting a beautiful amount of surface area here. First being forced to bring back those oracles but Jadon while he did have a good swell of units what has he actually been able to achieve here not too much is the answer a couple of stalker kills and a couple of zealot kills that's pretty much it the nexus is still standing the photon overcharge doing a heck of a lot of damage and Jadon has been forced back so while first did take a decent chunk of resources damage it's still nothing compared to Jadon and both of these oracles are still alive they're both still they're able to harass further if required. And that just causes so many problems for Jadong, who is still... Well, he is now up to the kind of 68 drone marks. He's quite happy there, but the counter-attack coming on through is looking very scary. While there's a decent number of lings, the infestors aren't yet out. The first few are popping just this second. But are they going to be here in time? There's a decent number of lings, so first does need to be slightly cautious. He does have the mass recall out if required. There's the fungal, and he's just going to hightail it out of there, not wanting to take that fight. He didn't have plus two finished yet. That's still two seconds off, so just pushing on through, trying to find a little bit of damage wherever possible. 
and then just deciding to retreat away and just get to safety after seeing the infestors and get up an appropriate response to that. I have Tech now coming on through here for Jadong, so <clears throat> he's just going to be chilling, having a relatively nice time on the whole and, well, keeping a look at all these different bases. Not too much else in the way of Tech, just the plus three coming on in. No sign of Robotics Bay, only the Twilight Council for now. We may see a couple of oh, the Templar Archives come on down just to try and get the feedback, but remember, Jadong is fighting to stay within Intel Extreme Master San Jose here. If he loses this game, first will obviously win 2-0 and Jadong will be eliminated in Stage 2 in the group stage, which is not something you ever really want to happen. A couple more Lings fighting their way through, trying to pick off anything they can find as these reinforcements come. The Stalker's still being pretty bold, forcing back creep spread thanks to that Observer. We've also got a fair few Zealots warping in from the side. Finally, that Proxy Stargate and Pylon have been found, but yep, moving on in. The Zealots are acting as a bit of a distraction. All of these Zerglings have come on forward. I know they're going to be too strong in those Zerglings because they do have superior upgrades to the armor upgrades of the Lings. But that's just still a lot of speedlings. The Stalkers, though, they're coming on the right-hand side. They're plus two Bling Stalkers. Very scary. Nice Fungal Growth. Grabs that Mothership Core. Needs to be careful about keeping that alive if possible. It does have enough energy for a recall out. The Stalkers backing away. This is a relatively good engagement position, though, because obviously the Lings can't get too much surface area. The Infestors, though, they're still fairly scary. Those Fungal Growths are not something that you really want to be contending up against. They'll lock down those Bling Stalkers. But more Zealots once again pushing in towards this fourth base. With the Stalkers coming across as well, this could be rather problematic to say the least. The Blink Stalkers just backing away though, seeing this army repositioning itself. They may loop around, try and take out the third again, but all in all, these two just backing and forthing, trying to find avenues to attack where possible. And to be fair, Jadong is starting to level out those resources lost, with those Zealots just being thrown to their death repeatedly. But the aim for first is to act as a distraction. He's got his own fourth base starting on up. He's not losing too much, he's just got to be careful to keep these Stalkers alive wherever possible. Doesn't want to take un or unfavorable trades where he can. But look at this, Jadong, he's got the Great Aspire coming on through. Going to be going up into Broodlord Tech. With Adrenal Glands on these Lings, they're going to get fairly scary fairly soon. And this is now getting into a very funky position. Broodlord Infester. Up against, first with a lot of Bling Stalkers, adding in a couple of Immortals now. Problem is still these speedlings, they're being very brave. There's a lot of them as well. 95 speedlings on the field at the moment. A couple of corruptors coming on in. First does need to be slightly careful where he takes these engagements. Trying to find some avenue to attack. Picking off a gas, of course, is never going to be a bad thing. Just limiting the Vespian income of your opponent. Jadong's only sitting about 1,200 minerals and gas. Preparing to get quite a few Broodlords out. He's also going for the Ultralisk Cavern, interestingly enough. Fleet Beacon, though. And the two additional Stargates coming on in now. The proxy one may not be used too much. Jadong chasing down this Protoss force. Trying to make up distance towards these Stalkers. They do blink away. Revelation coming out now from the Oracle. Granting a lot of vision on this Zerg army and just its positioning. Just so, ideally, first is going to be able to reposition where required. He gets a good look at it. Doesn't actually see many of the Corruptors. And that's because they're all morphing into Broodlords back in the base. Six of them coming on through now. We've also got the Ultralisk Cavern nearly finished. And this is a very late game army for Jadong. And considering the fact that these two additional Stargates and that Fleet Beacon isn't finished. We don't have any Tempest yet. And if we look at the overall uh, vision coming through at the moment of what's been seen. The answer is not too much. Of course if we look at this the Rotron has been spotted. Now we see... The Ultralisk Cavern there. And that's a good little pick off and scout anyway. The Great Aspire hasn't been seen, nor is the Spire itself. But still, we do have the Fleet Beacon and these two Stargates out. So we can see double Tempest production start once a Broodlord is identified. But catch that. We do have now the Great Aspire seen and destroyed by these Bling Stalkers coming in the right-hand side. But this is triggering Jadong to advance forward with his Speedlings into the fourth base of first. Quick mass recall out though towards this fourth base may be able to get saved. It's going to be pretty close. A lot of that army getting picked apart. This Colossus may end up actually dying. It's very low on health. Just managing to survive with 18 HP. There's the Mothership coming on through. Even though the Great Aspire has been seen, I don't know if First is aware of the fact that Broodlords are on the field. If he isn't, he's about to be though. Sees them now. This should trigger him starting up some Tempest. They really are the best response to Broodlords. 
This poor Colossus is not going to last too much longer either as those Zerglings come across. They've got Adrenal Glands and the 2-2 upgrades. Pick it off easily. Now the Tempest coming on through, but can they get out quickly enough to fend this off? Jadong knows that he's got momentum, knows that his Great Aspire was taken down behind this, and as a result, has to deal some good damage here after losing his third as well. He has been able to kill the fourth of his opponent, but first's third is looking to be in a bit of a rough position. Almost certain to die now as those 2-2 Adrenal Glandlings able to wrap around a good amount of damage with that surface area, and it does indeed get taken out. Good Fungal will trap that Colossus. A counter-attack now coming in from first as he moves in towards this fourth of Jadong. Can he get out enough Tempest in time? He's rallying them back. He's hoping that he can buy enough time to get that down because if he can and he picks off those Broodlords, with there being no Great Aspire, there isn't really many other options to deal with that. The fourth place of Jadong now taken down and this is getting into a very funky position. For the moment at least, Oh, now the Tempests have been seen, but I don't think many more are going to get out. He knows that he wouldn't be able to get any more Tempests, so instead going for just a couple of Voidways, trying to find some avenue to get a bit more damage out. But Pylon being focused will depower everything there. Mothership Core. Creating a nice little bit of cloaking field down here. Unfortunately, the Overseer doing a fine job of revealing everything allowing these ultras to push on through still the base trade going strong though first trying to get as much damage down as he can the two tempests working away steadily the broodlords though they've been able to retreat a couple of infested terrans will finally be able to pick off that mothership but yes this is a rough spot even though the damage is going strong Jadon should be in a better position here he's up quite substantially in supply I don't believe there's any probes out on the map either. Where are the probes currently? They're all sitting up in this main. A couple of... Oh no, there are still quite a few out on the map. Retreating away from those ultras. Probes valiantly fighting. Trying to keep that broken cannon alive. Buying a bit more time there. Picking apart anything where possible. The Tempest still doing some good work. Trying to take down anything wherever possible. The probes, unfortunately, though. All but one escape. And one has done a perfectly fine job of building up a nexus so we are in a very very funky position right now Jadong is trying to remake his third and fourth he's got his third back up so he's mining actually really really well and getting a couple of vipers that's going to help him a lot good number of roaches are here and they're dishing out a fair bit of damage the colossus needs to be careful one goes down and that is a staggering loss immediately a couple more shots coming on down here Checking about. While these Tempests are dealing a good bit of damage, it's not quick enough. So many Ultralisks, so many Investors still on the field. And this very small fir force of first is just trying to dish out damage wherever possible. Taking down a lot of these drones, but no ability for it to recall out to this Nexus. No Mothership remaining. And well, Jadon is looking to quite comfortably take this second game now the base race was really the only option available to first and Jadong isn't even too bothered about trying to engage it he's got the broodlords there he's just got to be a bit careful about the fact that the tempest are edging on forward actually Jadong doesn't really have a response to the tempest it's just a couple of queens good abducts coming on through and with chain fungus that can be problematic with the infested terrans as well those Tempests could be running into a lot of hurt. They need to back away, but the Chain Fungals are just going to be too much for them. They're trying to pick apart at the Broodlords, but it's not going to be enough. The Chain Fungals, great control, though. This is really, really good work coming down here from first. What does Jadong do? He just slowly edges up and up here. He knows that he's got those Broodlords. He's got all of those Ultralisks. He goes for a couple of Blinding Clouds as well. There's the Fungal Growth. Jadong is dispatching of the final remaining units here of first and he should easily be able to clean up this game gg is called and jadong levels out this series tying it to 1-1 congratulations there to jadong and that means we're going into the second ace game of this evening and that is great news for us quick break now while we set up game number three so make sure you stay tuned and i'll be back with game three of jadong versus first the winner goes on into the decider game of Group B. The loser is eliminated from Intel Extreme Masters San Jose. Hashtag IEM on Twitter. Let us know who you think is going to advance. And I'll see you in a couple of minutes.
Welcome back to Intel Extreme Masters San Jose, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Maddles and we're going in to game number three of this best of three. Things are looking intense this evening as the loser of this best of three will be eliminated from Intel, Intel Extreme Masters. It all comes down to one map and it's going to be Catalina. Spawning to the left, we've got the Red Zerg playing for evil geniuses. It is Jadong. And his opponent to the north. The Blue Zerg playing for TCM we have first. So a nice little bit of Jadong versus first. Their group was tough. They're in a group with Polt and Revival. They're going to be battling it out in the winner's game on the mainstream after the decider game of group A. So that should be coming up in about an hour. Give or take if I know what the schedule is going for. Of course in group A, Snoot was able to just beat Huck. Currently, Rain and True are tied 1-1. That's going on the main stage as I speak. So the winner of that will be advancing through into stage three. The loser will battle it off against Snoot to decide on the second place. And of course, this is Group B. Polt and Revival will be battling it out soon. And obviously, the winner of this game will be battling against the loser of theirs to decide on the second spot of Group B. All very tough, all very bold. And well... We've got the Forge first again. Is it going to be a repeat of game number one here coming down from first? Probe waiting about. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Sneaky Probe. He was waiting for the drone. Comes and checks. I don't think the Probe is being seen yet. Jadong, he knows something a bit fishy could be happening. Will the drone come down enough? He checks everywhere, but just down the bottom of that ramp doesn't see it. Probe still waiting. Jadong, is he going to come and check over? Is he going to come and check far enough? Yes, he does. Okay, so he sees the fact that this pylon's coming. A second probe, though, already there. Unfortunately, with a good little trick, pushes out that probe. The cannon already on its way down. The first drone being fought. Won't quite get taken down. A lot more drones being pulled here. The second pylon is coming on through up on this high ground. This grants vision for this lower cannon. Uh, but it's going to take some time for that cannon to finish up. The pylon, because a large amount of surface area is free on it, could very easily get taken down. One of the probes is also killed, but remember, the second probe is still alive. That first cannon, about to finish on up, but it needs a bit more vision radius. Spinecrawler now coming on through, and that's actually a really important decision. First, I don't think he's going to go for any more pylons or any more cannons up on this high ground, because with the spine crawler already coming, it would be done before... Anything on the high ground was finished and it would get picked off pretty simply. So that was actually a really smart decision by Jadon getting down that spine. He should have deflected most of this pressure. Of course, the photon cannon on the low ground is a little bit irritating. But it is going to get taken down by the spine crawler with relative ease once it's finished up and the creep spreads a bit further. It will just uproot and edge on in and try and take it down. So that's a really smart move. Creep spread also coming on through. Meanwhile, behind this first, he's taking his natural base. The Overlord's coming to scout that, gets a look at the timing of the gateways and that sort of thing. And all of it is coming through at the moment very nicely. There's the spine in range. Actually, no, not quite in range of that Foden Cannon. Just a little bit out. Having to just wait back. Jadong needs to edge it forward just a little bit further. There we go. That poor Photon Cannon. Not going to know what's happened to it. Just going to start getting swiped away. Probe does actually sneak up onto the high ground. Allows one of those creep tumors just to get delayed a little bit. All it can really do. Probe trying to be a bit of a hero. Dies hideously though to that spine as a result of doing it. Overlord now. Coming on in. Just trying to get a look at the gas count and that sort of stuff. But Jadon successfully denying the cannon rush this game. He actually lost nothing. And he didn't even delay his natural at all by going for that build. Ridiculously, ridiculously good defense by Jadong there. It was really wise to come back down. I didn't actually think I was going to see it because he pulled the drone down and checked this sort of area. But didn't check down in that very corner until the second passing of that drone. So Jadong knowing something sneaky could be coming. And being in this situation now, Jadong is going to be feeling very, very comfortable. He will have delayed, his opponent will have delayed tech and basically his entire build in order to get down those two pylons and a cannon and as a result he didn't do any damage with him that's a bit of a pain Jadong's third is a little bit later because of it but hey he's caused 400 500 resources worth of damage and lost time for first so it doesn't matter too much Stargate is of course coming on through now for first so 
he is going to again be going for that Stargate tech. We've seen it in both games so far. Why switch it up in game number three? And he's still going to just keep on looking about, keep on trying to find any avenues to harass, any avenues to poke and prod. Does know where the third base is as well, so knows that his opponent has taken this third here as opposed to the one north of his natural base. Stalker just waiting out here at the moment, wants to be trying to pick off any creep spread wherever possible. Just staying just outside of the vision of this, popping into vision every now and then, but Jadong for the moment I don't believe knows about it. He does have his lair however though, two gases sitting here as well, adding in quite a few roaches and he wants to punish that cannon play, knowing that his opponent won't have too much to defend with, as this overseer is seeing a lot. Third base, now up and running. Spine crawler, moving on forward again. This is a good position for this spine. It defends the natural and also one avenue into the third base, so that's a good little move. Unfortunately, the stalker is able to get a fair amount of damage down onto it, but long term the stalker won't be able to win. So it just backs out, but it only took shield damage, and that's obviously going to be quite nice. Phoenix now coming on out. These two are going to start working away at a couple of overseers and overlords, which is a bit annoying for Jadong, but at least he sees those Phoenix very, very early. He's got a lot of roaches coming on through as well, and Phoenix aren't very efficient against roaches, because even though they can lift them, it takes them a heck of a long time to kill them, and that's not something they're really first ones to be dealing with, because he doesn't have any sentries. A lot of his gas going into these Phoenix already, and that robotic facility, and that means a big roach push isn't something that he's prepared to deal with. I don't think he even realizes it, that it's coming at the moment. The Phoenix picking off a bit of damage. The Roach one now gets seen, but so do the Roaches by this single, single Phoenix. Additional cannons being made, frantically trying to get done. There's a gap in the wall, though, and that's going to allow these Roaches to come and hug on up. They're going to focus down the sentries because they're the big problem with those force fields. Both of them get taken down. Zealot now getting warped in. The Phoenix frantically trying to come back. The cannons have been taken down. Probes being pulled. This is a problem for first. Jadong is going to be able to do so much damage. Working away at so many of these probes. There weren't enough sentries to wall off. And Voidway short. Sure, that's coming on through. But how much damage is going to be done before that Voidway's here? There's an Immortal being chrono boosted out. But already these roaches are just having a field day. Ten workers killed. They picked off a couple of sentries as well. They picked off a good number of zealots. And this is just going to keep on getting worse. More roaches coming across the map. Behind this, Jadong has now transitioned into droning and getting his hydralisk den. But already he's doing oh so, so much. Working away at the forge, depowering the gateway. Forge does get taken down. This immortal is going to die as well. That's got nowhere to go. And that's because the Voidway having to try and pick off these roaches up in the main. So that's doing even more. Good actual force field there. He's going to save the Immortal for a couple more seconds. But these roaches, they're doing just such an amazing job of all of this. So Jadong reading this game so well. Going for a bit more guaranteed damage. Wants to try and get that sentry if it can and is going to be able to pick it off. In total, that was four sentries. Sure, all of the roaches went down, but look at the work account. 16 workers killed, 35 probes to 62 drones, and Jadong has now got his Hydralisk Den finished. He's got plus two on its way. He's got a good drone count. There's a couple of Phoenix coming, but... Oh, that's actually a bit unfortunate. The Spore Quarter moving just as the Phoenix come across. Allows the Queen to get picked off. But yeah, Hydralisk coming on out. They're going to be able to shut this down. And yes, there's a Robotics Bay on its way. But there just isn't enough money at the moment for first. He's only at 41 probes. That hurts. He's slowly catching back up there. But that aggressive roach build was just such an amazing, amazing play. Good response by first, though. Getting down the void rate the second that he saw it. As well as the immortal. It brought him time and allowed him to deal with those roaches. And it wasn't just GG there. But he's now fighting a very, very uphill battle. These Phoenix, they're not going to be able to do too much more either. Just because of the Hydralisks coming on down, they're going to be able to fend off pretty much anything that could be causing issues. But yep, Robotics Bay now done. But it's it's still just so difficult to make something work here because there just isn't really too much else on the map. You might have the big power units. You may have a couple of... Obviously, you may have the Colossus out, a couple of Immortals. But if there's no gateway support for it, that's what's going to cause all of your issues. More Hydras coming on through now. They do have the plus one range as well. Will they get over here before the Colossus? It looks like just they're going to be able to. Jadong also taking a fourth base. These Phoenix still trying to find any avenue or any option to get a little bit more damage. Pick off the odd Overlord. All in all though, these Hydras, they did come for a little poke up and said, Nope, 
don't want to try and engage them. Don't want to take a bad position. Don't want to take a fight that would potentially allow first to start catching back up. Instead, just going to be pumping out more hydras, going for the hive. This is going to be looking to go into, obviously, Viper Tech, get some abducts onto those colossi. But yeah, Jadong, he is in a very good position here. A third base may try to get established shortly by first. Let's look at his gateway count. He's up at six gates, obviously with a robotics facility as well. It'll be difficult for him to try and expand. He may just try and go for the win and just try and overpower his opponent. But it's going to be a tough call because there's roaches coming out now. It's plus two versus plus one. The plus one carapace won't be done in time, but the hive probably will be. It looks like that's the plan of first. Not going to be going for a third. Instead, just trying to fake it a little bit. Those two gateways haven't been seen. They're the only two that haven't been spotted yet. But the army moving across will be seen shortly. Still more units getting pumped on out. About to get discovered as a pylon tries to come down here. Phoenix still doing quite a nice bit of work. Out come the Vipers. They probably aren't going to be done in time to, be able to do too much. They do manage to pick up one stalker though the force fields aren't gonna be able to get there in time this fourth base may very well just have to be abandoned with the colossi there roach is coming across though they feel they can take this fight you can get quite a good concave but the force fields on the ramp could be very problematic so first should be able to get this fourth maybe able to even get these hydralists up to the side great force fields there allowing those colossi just to pick them apart and that really was a really really solid decision just allowing those hydralists to get picked out but now We've got, obviously, this Protoss force moving down the ramp. Going to be trying to edge on in towards the natural base. But the Vipers are now here. The Abducts are ready. One Abduct comes down on the Colossus. And if those Colossi die, that's where the vast majority of this army loses its force. Jadong, 180 supply to under 100 now. Crushing down this army. The Abducts were bang on the money. The Vipers were the key to the success of defending this push. And Jadong is going to be able to advance 2-1 over first, eliminating first from Intel Extreme Masters San Jose, 2-1. Congratulations to him. He is going to be off to face the winner of Pult and Revival after theirs game. And it is going to be to play out for the second spot through to Stage 3 from Group B. So that is it for Group B here on this stream. But it's not much longer now until we get into the next game. And we already know what that is. It is going to be 4GG versus Hyun, a nice bit of Terran versus Zerg coming up here next. Who do you reckon is going to win? Drop us some tweets. Hashtag IEM on Twitter. Make sure you check that out. If you want to check me out, I'm at Maddles91. But we'll be back in a couple of minutes with Hyun versus 4GG. It is going to be insane. And it's coming up next. See you in a couple of minutes.